So Martin, you remember how we were talking about Terraform? Yeah, Katie, it made me really want to try it out. Well, how about we try out some Terraform provisioning right now? Sounds great. So Martin, I can see you've got a new project set up and you've configured billing, yes? Yep, that's right. I have here Martin's projects and a bunch of numbers, yeah. Yep. So if you open up the source code I gave you over in GitHub. All right. Uh, there it is. Yep. And if you go down to the readme, there's all the instructions you need to get it working. Oh, excellent. My cat photo identification service. All right. Uh, billing enabled launch Cloud Shell. Yep. So you can run all this in Cloud Shell because it already has uh, G Cloud locally and it also has Terraform locally installed as well. And you can get to the Cloud Shell by clicking that little icon in the Google Cloud Platform console. So if you go to the readme, there will be a git clone command that you can clone the source code into your Cloud Shell. Oh, I love it when it's simple. All right, uh, let's see, copy that, paste that git clone in there. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then you want to go into the expeditions directory and then the Terraform directory. Okay, very good. All right, I'm there. Yep. And so from here, there are three commands. gcloud build submit to create the container and then two commands for Terraform. All right, gcloud build submit. Oh, I had said project. Let's do that. And my project ID is up here. Authorize that. Mm -hmm. All right, the build finished. Yep. And now it's just two Terraform commands. First, Terraform init. Terraform init. Very good. And now Terraform right. apply. Terraform apply. Project ID, I have that in my copy buffer. Mm -hmm. uh, well, look, do I want to perform these actions? Uh, what mm -hmm. should I say here? Y-E-S for yes. Aha. Yes, let's do it. And it's done. Uh, looks like uh, it's a service URL here. What's that? That's your running service. Oh, cool. Should I click it? Yeah. All right. Let's see. Cats. Oh, look. <laughs> I have cats. And we have some image labels here. Where do these labels come from? So would you like to know what this service does? Yeah, please explain. So if you go back to the GitHub repo, I've got a architecture diagram listed on the readme there right at the end. Aha, architectural diagram, nice. So this is what's going on here. What we've done is, as we described in last week's video, we had to create a container first. So we used cloud build to create a container that then stored that container in container registry. And then we used Terraform. We have, or I already created a whole bunch of manifests that would do all the steps required, but Terraform was going and creating a whole bunch of uh, IAM permissions, service enablement and the like. It then created a cloud run bucket and a whole bunch of sample cats that we saw. It then created a function and then it created a service. What we have is a service that goes through all the images in a bucket and for each of those images, sends them off to Cloud Functions and asks Cloud Functions to talk to the Vision API to get information about each image. In this case, it's a cat, and we're asking it to describe the image so it's coming back with labels like cats, whiskers, and the like. Those results then come back to Cloud Run, and then it displays all the results in that lovely web page. Nice. So these four boxes were all automatically deployed with that one Terraform apply command? Yep. Easy, isn't it? Oh. 
Yeah. Uh, so they are all in here somewhere in my project now? Yeah. So if you want to go to Cloud Run, you can see the service has been created. Yeah. Let's see. Oh, all right. I see the cats service here. So you can see the service has been created. Because we did all this in Terraform, the console is having to start from cold. Oh, I see. Yeah. Ah, yeah, I clicked on revisions. I see there's one revision here. It's getting 100% of the traffic. This is looking good. Yep. We also created the Cloud Run function, which if you go over to functions, you can see that's there. All right, Cloud Functions. Let's have a look. All right, so I'm in functions. Ah, we have a a uh, function called processing here. Yep. Aha, uh -huh. so here I can see the source code of, of that function that was part of the project. Yep. And then the, nice. the last major thing we did was create the cloud storage bucket and pre-populate it. Oh, right. That's those cat pictures we saw a minute ago, right? Yep. All right, we're in cloud storage. The bucket I created is the one that has media on the end. Oh, okay. Let's have a look. Uh huh. And it looks like some cat pictures. Yep. So what I did in this case, Martin, is I created all these elements in Terraform, but I also pre-populated the bucket with some sample cats. That way you can see that your service is working. What we can do now is we can delete those cats. Because we created them in Terraform, we can recreate them again. So what we can do is remove those cats and get Terraform to recreate them for us. Oh, cool. Let's try it. Delete them. All right. Feels a little scary, but I trust you, Katie. In this case, Terraform created this sample data, so it can recreate this sample data. Please do not go deleting everything from your buckets. <laughs> and if you how do I the get servers, them back with Terraform? Reload the surface first, just to show that the cats have gone away. Oh, right. OK, so here was the cat pictures. Oh, I have no cats. That's so I sad. I have no cats. So if you go back to Cloud Shell, yeah. the last command we ran was Terraform apply. So if you want okay. to run that again, oh, and maybe right. make the window a little bit bigger, because we're going to start looking at some of the Terraform output now. Oh, OK, cool. Uh, there we go. Let's see if I have the project. Yeah, project ID in my copy buffer. So last oh, time you may have sure. noticed we were creating 18 elements. This time we're only creating a smaller set of elements. Terraform has identified that our desired state of the project requires us to recreate these three images and some other smaller bits of metadata. But... Ah. I see. You can type Y-E-S again and get all the cats back. Oh, yes. Let's get the cat. Oh, that was quick. All right. So if I hit the service over here now, we should mm -hmm. hopefully see some cats. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the cats are back. Oh, I love this. How I could, if anything went awry with the service, I could just easily recreate it. That's one of the powers of Terraform. Now, there are some limitations to how much Terraform can save you from misconfigured projects, but this is an example of how Terraform can recreate some of these resources for you. Ah, right. Cool. Uh, I, I have to keep on entering the project ID here. That's a little annoying. Can we do something about that? We can. Um, so what we'll do is we'll do two things at once here. We'll get you to reapply Terraform again, and we'll also get you to define that variable. So if you go Terraform apply, but before you hit okay. enter, go space hyphen VAR. Yeah. Space project equals, project equals and then your project name. Ah, I see. Let's do that. Now. This is a working application here. Is it safe to run Terraform apply again when everything is working as it should? Yep. In theory, Terraform will not see any changes or any changes that it does see a little tiny uh, differences in metadata or something that it doesn't control. But 
whenever you run Terraform Apply, you should just check what's going to be applied. And then if you're comfortable with those changes, type YES. YES, let's do it. Boom, that was quick. Would you like to destroy everything now? <gasps> destroy? It sounds dangerous, but we did get the cat pictures back before. OK, I'll trust you. Let's do it. <laughs> Disclaimer, in this case, we are using a brand new separate project that we created with Terraform, all the elements we created with Terraform. So now we're going to get Terraform to undo all the resource creation that it applied. So if you're ready, Martin, if you yeah. want to type Terraform destroy. Oh my gosh, Terraform destroy, like so? Yep. And you're going to have to enter in your project as well. Ah, okay. Should we do this? Oops. Or project equals. There it is. All right. Let's do it. Eighteen things will be destroyed. Oh my gosh. We created eighteen things. Now we're going to destroy eighteen things. So if you're ready, Martin, Y E S. And Terraform <sighs> will remove everything that it created. Oh my. All right, so it's destroyed. So now, if I hit this the application of the web page, oh my gosh, it's not even I have no cats. It's literally a 404. It, the URL doesn't exist, huh? We destroyed everything. Wow. But uh, OK. How do I get it back? Terraform apply. Oh, really? OK. Let's do that. All right. 18 things will be added, it says. OK. Let's do it. All right. Terraform reply is all done. Yep. And your cats should now be back. Oh, let's see here. So, OK, before I got a 404 error mm -hmm. because the service had been removed. Ah, the cats are back. I'm relieved. That was really cool, Katie. Did you want to take a look at what the Terraform manifests look like while we're here? Ah, yes. What's the magic that makes all of this happen? No magic, just the careful application of configuration files. <laughs> Very good. Let's have you a look. You can go to GitHub or we can use the uh, Cloud Shell editor. All right. Um, I'm going to GitHub. Uh, I'll go up in the directory here. Huh. .tf. Does that have anything to do with it? Yep. .tf is for Terraform manifests. So there are a couple of manifests in here. The three main ones that are standard names for Terraform manifests are the main, which is the main file, variables for variables, and then outputs for outputs. Uh, each of the other manifests that I have there for this demonstration are just a logical separation of each of the different components, the function for functions, the service for service, media for media, etc. Those folders that I've got in there are also just the source code. So if you have a look at the function, you'll end up with the uh, requirements.txt and the application file that you, we saw earlier in Cloud Functions. So that's just the function code. Same for the service code. But it's those terrible ah, manifests that define the Cloud Run everything. service? Yeah. Yeah. Aha. Uh -huh. Cool. But it's those manifests that define what we want our project state to be. Oh, I see. They list the services and the buckets and everything. It's in these TF files. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so, Katie, I have one more question for you. Uh, when I was running this Terraform Apply, it always asked me to input yes, Y-E-S, uh, to, to actually make it happen. Can I automate that away as well? Yes, but you can automate it away. You can auto-approve. But when you're running Terraform locally, you really should be checking what you're doing uh, for automation pipelines and uh, conti continuous uh, deployment. You can't 
have a human type Y E S. So there are ways Terraform can do that. But when you're learning, make sure that you actually go back and read what Terraform's going to do, especially if you start destroying stuff, just to make sure that you're in the right project, that you're manipulating the resources that you expect. Ah, oh, cool. Got it. Well, I can't wait to write some uh, Terraform manifests and replace these long readme files I've been sending to my customer. This is very exciting stuff. Thank you for showing me, Katie. Absolutely no worries, Martin. All right. If uh, Thank you for watching. And if you have any questions or any suggestions for new topics we should bring up in these episodes, please enter them in the comments below. Thank you. Bye.